So I'm going to do a video on this bike, which I actually did for a customer. Not even, I would say probably 10 months ago. I'd have to go and check, but it's probably like 10 months ago since I did fab on this bike. This was a one-off scratch built I did for a customer who's pretty new to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He's originally from uh, Southern California. And one-off scratch built the way he wanted it. It was basically a collaboration design between him and I. And, you know, which is how I always do it. He had certain elements like this, this section in here. He wanted this big, beefy, bulky look. And but I've actually got this design on a couple of my personal bikes. So he wanted he wanted me to do that on the back. And then the cool thing was uh, besides that, he kind of gave me free reign on what else to do, which it's always nice when I get a customer who trusts me with that. So this uh, bike came back and uh, I'm, that's one reason I'm doing a video on it because whenever I originally did this bike, I wasn't even into making these videos yet. So now that it's back, I've got the opportunity to kind of archive it. And it came back because I'm going to be converting it to an e-bike. So it's going electric. He brought all this for me last night as well. And... It's the four inch, four inch by 26 wheel. And it's an e-bike link kit, which turned out great because I didn't tell him to get this, but my green web chopper right over there, I've got the same kit on it, but it's rear, rear wheel drive. And his is the same kit, it's just uh, the front wheel drive. And what's going to end up having to happen is I'm going to have to unlace that wheel, unlace this wheel, and then put that hub motor and these spokes in that outer hoop. And then, of course, true it. And wire it all up. Uh, I love these e-bike link kits, too, because of their connectors. They use an XT60 for the battery, which I've got a whole bag full of these inside. Uh, so that makes that real easy. The battery uh, came with these. And so basically I'm going to cut these off and solder an XT60 on there. And then it'll be simple plug and play. Uh, but going back to these connectors, E-Bike Link's connectors are awesome. They're, they're dummy proof, they're idiot proof, you can't really hook them up the wrong way. And especially for like the hub motor, it's got this plastic uh, protector on here, but you can see inside there, it's just, it's just one wire and off the motor and it's got a multi-pin connector. And they go in these other one wire matching connectors, you know it's hard to see in there. And you just snap them together and that's that. I Why I bring that up is because I've got other kits like this personal rider of mine. And it's also got one wire coming off the motor. And when it gets up to the controller, you can see this bird's nest I got going. Whenever it gets up to the controller, it splits off into like four separate wires and I had to strip all of them and make bullet connectors and all that stuff to make it nice and tidy. And with the e-bike link stuff, like I said, it's just that one, one wire with one pin, with one connector, multi-pin. You plug that in, it's a waterproof connector, and that's it. Bam, you're done, ready to go. So for us builders or those out there built getting your own kits and building, it makes it so much easier and saves so much time, I can't even tell you. And kind of back to the battery for a second. I've actually got this same battery, but a different brand. Uh, mine is Joyacy, which I highly recommend. They have awesome customer service. 
I'm not sure who or what brand this is because I think it's like it's they're all pretty much the same it's just different distributors and these have got uh I I opened mine up to confirm they've got either Panasonic or LG cells I think mine's uh Panasonic and it's over Panasonic cells and it's over two years old now I haven't had a single problem with it I put my ohm meter on it. It's still putting out 52 volts. And my charger quit about five or six months ago. I got a new charger and it's been right back to working like new. So back to the with you know back to the subject of batteries. You can be cheap with whatever you want to be cheap with, but I personally my Biggest recommendation for going e-bike is do not get a cheap battery. Like it's the single comp one, you know, most critical component of like performance, longe longevity, how much you get out of each charge. And you're really not saving money because I, I think I paid around 400 for my battery and he told me his was around 400 too. And this is a uh, 48 volt 17 AH. So you can find batteries out there in the 200 range, but will it live past a year or, you know, how long does it, the charge cycle go, blah, blah, blah. So it, it just quickly, quick note on that is just don't be cheap on a battery. And this controller, um, we talked about briefly on where I was going to put it on that, but like on this frame that I did, what was working on for myself last year until I got too busy with other stuff. I actually made those brackets right there for the controller to mount in because I had planned on uh, tanking in with uh, sheet aluminum this whole area. So basically that would be sandwiched in there and you wouldn't see it. Uh, I am going to have to find a spot on here. Uh, we talked about briefly last night that I'm probably going to be mounting that battery right in here. And as long as it, those need about an inch and a half, two inches to slide forward to unlock out of the plate holder. And I'll probably put the controller down here just because... Uh, that you know the battery and the controller the closer you can keep them together it just makes wiring a lot cleaner so this bike the other thing about it is this is a hundred percent typical of what's in the custom cruiser scene the last five six seven years i'm talking about construction components even style wise parts wise like you know it's got the 26 by 4 inch wheels that everybody loves these are obviously anodized red and i did do some custom dropouts for them and this is for a 26 and this is for a 29 so he's got that option but if you put a 29 in your ride height stays the same so there's that double option and then of course i did it you know something kind of stylish so it's not just a big old block of steel in there but uh this is completely different from the type of construction that i do with my personal bikes and by that i mean it's little stuff that if you're not a builder or if you're not really familiar with bicycles or fabrication in general of tube stuff you really wouldn't notice too much and uh everybody in this scene likes these miter joints which i'm not a fan of whatsoever because you have weld full weld reinforcement on the inside but then you're grinding it smooth on the outside and i typically run a joint like this where that I'll cope this tube and then it'll butt completely up against the other tube and you'll have a 360 degree weld all the way around. And I did that for all of these, especially in critical areas like the, the seat stay area. Everything is butted and 100, you know, 360 degree welded all the way around. 
right in here or down here, which I really loved. Uh, he loved too the way this whole area came out. But it's just the difference in like on my stuff, even the big joints. You know, mine's the same thing. I don't I don't run miters. I always butt one tube completely into the other one. But again, this is my bike. This is a customer bike. So, you know, whatever the customer wants, that's what they get. But I, I as a 23-year welder, and I weld everything, not just bicycles, I really don't like this the whole mitered thing. If it's something not so structural like a handlebar joint, where it's not getting actual, you know, structural load on it all the time, fine, who cares? Uh, but for stuff like this, you know, and the reason I'm saying this too is it's, it's not even really an opinion. I've actually had customers, you know, stuff, customers bring me their other frames, not my frames, but uh, other frames that other builders have done for them, especially diamond frames. So what I mean by diamond is when they take a square tube and they turn it up like this. So they'll run, you know, like this main tube like this and then a smaller 7 8 square tube here. And when they do that, they'll have this like this and this like this. And where they meet right here, it'll be just this corner. The corner of this and the corner of that. And they'll just butt them up and weld them. And or a lot of times they'll, you know, they'll whatever, they'll 45 the ends like these of these. And for a joint like this, they'll miter them together like that. And I've had customers bring me other custom frames and they're cracked. They're cracked, they're cracked, they're cracked every time. And, you know, the thing with this whole scene, which I completely got out of like a year and a half ago now, the thing with this scene is it's always looks, looks, looks. It Who cares how it rides or if you can only ride it around the block, it, you know, or if it's structurally strong, who cares? Or if it weighs 500 pounds, who cares? It's just, oh, it looks cool, it looks cool, it looks cool. But it's like I tell customers, I'm like, well, how cool does a cracked frame look? You know, and they come to me all the time, well, this is cracked and that's cracked, and it's always the mitered joints. And that's just one thing with this with this scene, which I'm not going to go into. It's changed so much the last five, or five, six, seven years, and... It's like all scenes, it's they go through cycles. And but what's happened the last five, six, seven years, I just got totally disenfranchised with the whole thing. And this bike though is just an example though that you know I can build these kind of bikes. I can build any kind of bike all day long. Whatever you want, fine, I'll I'll build it. You know, but me personally, I'm not really a fan of this style of building and really not even a fan of the way these style bikes are set up because they're they're not built for riding. They're sh they're more a show bike or more cro cruising five miles per hour, which if that's what you're into and you're more into the quote unquote bike life for the social aspect. Fine. If that's your deal, good for you. But it's you know, I'm about riding. And they're just, they're not built for that. Not serious riding, not like 20 to 35 mile per hour riding. In fact, whenever I put this kit on, uh, we had already talked about it. Uh, we're going to have to go ahead and do a front brake on this because it's going to start getting fast enough that just that coaster brake is not going to handle it and be adequate. And that's one reason why he decided to go with the front drive, too, is because, again, uh, he's got a coaster in the back. And I had already set the frame width to accommodate uh, that Nexus hub, which is, I think I set it at like 130 millimeters. And I know positively from the one on the back of my web bike, it's... Uh, it's a lot wider than that, if you know, because you've got a seven-speed freewheel cog. 
So anyhow, uh, I'm going to get this kitted up this week. And then next week I'll probably uh, do another, a follow-up video of the kit with it installed and do a bit of a test ride. And I had already told, most people that know me already know, like I had already announced it at the beginning of last year. I sold all my bikes last year. I am down to this chopper, this electric chopper that's my daily rider. And then my green one that's back in there, that's my show bike, and that's it. I mean, this whole thing in here was full of bikes last year, and I got completely out of it. Uh, again, I just, I, I completely lost interest in this scene, and I was maxed out as a builder, too. Um, you know, I'm back to doing stuff like this. So, you know, I just... And with this, again, now I'm like back to doing my own thing and no scene telling me this is in and that's out and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I am doing bikes and, and parts and stuff, you know, stuff like this, especially because this is a customer of mine. And I actually wound up doing, he's from Southern California. He's got a cousin out there. And I did, a, once he saw this, I did a frame for his cousin and anyone that's local to the dfw area i'm still still doing bikes parts uh, mods or whatever for them but like the out of state stuff and all of that i've i completely got out of it last year and i don't really see myself foresee myself getting back into the whole thing and i i just got too many other too much other stuff on my plate right now uh besides these so all right guys uh, I'll follow this up next weekend.